I, I, I know an expert when I see it. Michael, Michael Cannon's been on the ground in South Florida for a number of years. Michael Cannon, I've seen some of his presentations before, um, where he can take you through and show you headlines from the 80s, the 90s, uh, today, where everything is basically history repeating itself. So I thought that maybe we should bring in somebody who can all sort of offer that, um, that, that experience, that know-how, that institutional knowledge, the context. So with that, I give you uh, Michael Cannon. Sales of real estate housing increased to 208,000 transactions in 2004, and then it declined 49% by 2005, by 2008, to 105,000 transactions. So if you follow the stock market, you watch the volume of transaction sales, because you have traders that make the day, that's Karl Marx, the market, and then you have sales volumes in Miami, or sales volumes around the country. So the values of real estate is trying to be indexed, and you can't do that because real estate is, doesn't operate the same way as the stock market. So if you see all these indexes that come out, please don't believe them, because they're not true. And I'll tell you why. The hyperbole of real estate price spike started to occur in 2004. Now why was it 2004? That's because excess capital was flowing into the economy. Thank you from other, uh, other, other sectors. Sales volumes and average price changes of used resale houses increased. The average price of a home was $151,384 in the year 2000. It increased in the year 2004 to $263,885. And then by the year 2006, which was the top of the market, $349,624. Part of that was artificial. And in fact, a great deal of that was artificial because the sales volumes decreased the sellers, both individual buyers and sellers of used homes and developers, start increasing the price prices to offset their margins. The average sales for used sales price, um, excuse me, total new housing sales volumes. New housing sales volumes has been blamed for all of this, and it's not really true. New housing sales volumes account for only 25% of the total sales market. And I'll give you some statistics on that. New single-family townhomes account for only 9.51%. And new condominium apartments only account for 15.8%. So when you see the rise and fall of housing down here, the market, the majority of it is resale housing. Resale housing accounts for 74.67%. And used <coughs> resale single-family townhomes account for 47.62%. And of course, condominium apartments account for 27%. So you find it very interesting. The headlines in the newspaper always blames it on sales and sales and sales. The majority of our problems actually have to do with refinances, and I'll discuss that in a moment. So as I discussed with you the cycle of real estate, which doesn't have a bubble, prices fall and rise by three factors. One, economic growth of the area, like Dr. Cruz was talking about. Basically, in-migration of people. Now, we have a very unique <coughs> economy in South Florida because we have a secondary market, and then we have an investor market. An investor market is sometimes a secondary market as well because they plan on using those properties in the future. Then we got the artificial market coming in for these investors that became speculators and they started to flip, flip units because of the hyper, hyperbole of the marketplace. And what happened during that period? There was such excess going on that Peter wasn't talking to Paul and we all got, excuse the expression, screwed. So currently we have a foreclosure rate and don't believe all the data that you see in the foreclosures. I'll tell you why in a moment. Foreclosure rate for 2008 totaled 56,530 units. But that's only the filings. That's really not a foreclosure sale. A foreclosure sale occurs when the lender takes it over and then it's resold in the marketplace. The data that's being published is really just the filings. A lot of that's on commercial real estate. A lot of that's on other real estate other than single family houses, other than condominiums. On a test sample, which we can't segregate because the data is not really available is that sometimes there's four foreclosures filed on the same property. That's in that 56,530 number. And I wish someday we could talk to Mr. Rubin, Mr. Cruz, to maybe uh, segregate that information so we can really get a clear picture of it. So basically we have about, about 9% of the, of, the, of the housing market at best is probably in distress. Carve that in half. We may have 6% that's really in foreclosure. The other 4% is talked about because it's being worked out with the banks and lenders. But that really means that 94% of it's not in trouble. But we're scared to death, aren't we? Because we want to have our uh, stability uh, that's going on. 
So having said that, let me give you some interesting observations. Again, we utilize uh, data from the mobile listing services. And the months of inventory based upon closed sales transactions have increased consecutively by mobile listings and our data that we tabulate from the market to, the past, uh, to a high of 31 months. To the third quarter of 2009, this is the inventory, has declined to 14 months, equating a 52.4% decrease in the inventory. That's good news, and that's real data. Pending sales transactions, other than what you saw in the headlines the other day about November transaction sales, uh, pending sales have fallen, which is only one month, it's not an indicator of the market, have increased 151% in the fourth quarter of 2008 to 2009. That is a jump, and what does that really say? The market is acting, the market is buying. Sales absorptions have increased 109% from 3.2 sales per month in the third, fourth quarter of 2008 to 6.7 uh, sales per month in the third quarter of 2009. What does that really say? As Dr. Cruz said, we may have hit the bottom. Well, I predicted that we hit the bottom in the second quarter of 2008, and that was beat up in the newspaper. <clears throat> what I meant by that? I meant that the volume of sales are increasing. It was a formula we've used for the last 40 years. And now I'm stating that prices will probably increase by the end of this year. Overall, because we're seeing some submarket areas, car cables, coconut grove, and Key Biscayne and Miami Beach starting to stabilize, as Dr. Cruz has stated. And what does stabilization mean? That means you have an equilibrium between the buyers and sellers in the marketplace. However, this progression may not occur unless the following happens. Government policies, Lord love government, we see in the paper every day, local and state. Maybe we'll have to revote all them out and start uh, anew because I don't know who's honest and who's not honest because every other day there's a corrupt politician that's being indicted. Business expansions. Uh, both uh, of us sit on the Beacon Council. She's past president. She'll tell you about that in a moment. And we see the expansions and inquiries that come here from all over the world, companies uh, increasing. If that business expansion occurs, what it happens? How they have to have housing someplace that they're going to rent. And I'm sure that we'll talk about the occupancies of offices. And then we deal with employment growth. I'm concerned with the dot numbers on unemployment. There's an interesting Brookings Institute report that just came out, and it's headlined, Who Cares About Federal Economic Statistics? Well, thank you to the prior uh, administration. I'm not going to say who it was, but he beat around the bush a little bit too much. <laughs> according, to this, according to this study, uh, the Congress and the President cut statistical information. Uh, and the budgets by $35 million. So therefore, the data that's published by what they call the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, we're going to write it down, it's called BLS, and that's what they use as a code for that, has turned into BS because they're guessing, but it is the official data that's coming out. And that has to do with employment growth, unemployment growth, and all the other information that's, that, 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 that's, that we rely upon. It's done by sample surveys. <coughs> so we really do that, and it's a survey of unre unreliable information, so they report it and there's further inquiries being made. We debate this at the Bacon Council in that regard. I don't know if we have a 10% unemployment rate. Matter of fact, I don't know, and you don't know how many people are here. All I do know is that we have gridlock on the highway, which causes road rage, road rage causes office rage, office rage causes a divorce, and then you have to have two households who create more cars on the roadway. <laughs> Our increases in net and in migration, available financing, we need to control terrorism, or the threat of control of terrorism, and we hope that we have continued hurricane-free seasons. Over the next 12 to 18 months, the direction of the overall market should realize its financial sector as the financial sector is stabilizing. There is money out there, but the traditional money of borrowing, which really was untraditional, we're going back to the future. Those of you that were in the real estate business years ago, or those in the lending business, we used to have a thing called recourse financing. That means if I sold a loan to you or participate a loan, I would buy it back if it went into default. And then we had a thing called guarantees. When you borrow money from a lender, you guaranteed it. And the, in the recent times, we didn't have that. So everybody became a broker. So here's my observation to my forecast. We'll continue to observe increased mergers and consolidations of businesses and service providers. We'll see an increase in public-private partnerships, and we're going to see more public works programs, so maybe our construction sector will probably have increased employment. We'll see more increased uh, failures of inexperienced developers. I'm spending a lot of time in court, in bankruptcy courts in particular. But we are seeing, for the first time, more workouts. Instead of we and they, there's a, there's a commonality going on, and government is pushing the lenders to work with the borrowers to work out these deficiencies, and they should do it 
and they'll probably learn over the time that maybe it's better to know the devil you know than the devil you don't know.